Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section. Look us up, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, YouTube Nation has spoken back to me. There are a lot of comments on the video I made uh, yesterday on my belief that Floyd Mayweather dominates Saul Alvarez. Right? One of the more intriguing comments was a comment from a subscriber who pointed out that Saul Alvarez planned to come in lighter than he normally does. That that was going to help his speed. Right? Might even help his volume, the argument went. Well, understand, that's not the case. Right? One of these sanctioning bodies actually has a 30-day weigh-in, 30 days before the fight, for the fighters to show what they weigh. And at that weigh-in, Canelo weighed 166 pounds. Now understand the contracted weight for this fight is 152 pounds. My question to you is when is the last time you lost 14 pounds in 30 days? Right? It's possible. Don't get me wrong. Lord knows these fighters find creative ways to lose weight. But while Floyd Mayweather is looking at film and honing his skills, Saul Alvarez is actually out there trying to lose weight so that he can match the contracted weight at the weigh-in. Right? What I found is that this yo-yoing of weight eventually catches up with a fighter. Now, Alvarez is under the age of 25. Typically, younger guys are able to handle the yo-yoing weight better than older guys. My point to you, though, is that Saul Alvarez has fought a lot of fights. He's old for his age, and already the warning signs are up. He's taking off parts of rounds, right? He doesn't strike me as a paragon of fitness. He already looks to me like the yo-yoing has caught up to him. And as I said before, if you're not in the best of shape, you're going to have a very hard time matching the speed and precision of Floyd Mayweather. I know Mayweather has critics. All you have to do is read the comments to the last video that I made here online. But even Mayweather's critics will agree that Floyd is always in shape for a fight. Right? Mayweather comes physically prepared to perform. Right? I don't believe the same can be said of Saul Alvarez. Let's shift gears for a second. You know, these fighters have friends and confidants as part of their management team, right? And uh, good for them. But sometimes those friends and confidants don't have enough power to reel the fighter back in. Somebody needs to sit down with Abner Maris and needs to talk to him about the facts of life. He's making a mind-blowingly bad decision right now, right? Johnny Gonzalez, who just beat him, and by the way, I don't care how short that fight was. That's a methodical beatdown. Johnny Gonzalez comes in and knows that he wants to land that left hook. He's a puncher, right? He drops Abner Maris hard twice off those left hooks. This isn't a fluke. Johnny Gonzalez comes in and is setting up that left hook from the opening bell. Also, understand, Johnny Gonzalez has other tricks up his sleeve. He has a great right hand. We didn't see it because 
Gonzalez understood his best path to victory against this opponent was the left hand, right? And so, of course, Gonzalez, who used to spar with Abner Maris, who's older than Abner Maris, right? Who, they were both trained by Nacho Beristain, who, you know, Gonzalez already has a big brother type thing going, now knows that he can knock out Abner Maris, and he can do so in one round. Now, if you've just been blown out by a puncher who knows you, isn't that the last man on the planet that you want to fight in your next fight? Especially when you're promoted by Golden Boy and you understand that your promoter has enough juice to eventually get you another title fight down the road. Just food for thought. If you're promoted by Bob Arum or Golden Boy, right, you know, big promoters in the industry, and you're a known name, you're the headliner, in fact, right? You're Abner Maris and CBS before this fight. Had you ranked number five on their pound for pound list, you're going to get other opportunities. One loss is not going to end your career. Here, Abner Maris has decided to exercise the rematch clause in his contract with Johnny Gonzalez. Really? Does he think Gonzalez is going to be less confident in his next fight? Let me just ask an obvious question. Did anyone here see Abner Maris block any of Johnny Gonzalez's left hooks the first time around? You know, also Mike Tyson used to say, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right? My point is simply this. Maybe Abner Maris this time is going to come in and is going to think, okay, let me keep my right hand up. But it's only a matter of time before a warrior like Abner Maris and his fights are high action. Right? It's only a matter of time before he starts trading punches with Johnny Gonzalez. Gonzalez is older. He's a technician. He's been a champion before. He has perhaps boxing's best trainer in his corner. A trainer who knows Abner Maris. That's a recipe for disaster. Right? One loss, okay, fans will say, you know what? Didn't work out for my guy that night. You lose two in a row. And suddenly you're out there looking like Chad Dawson is right now. Right? Two in a row is the kind of thing that really knocks you from the front of the line. Knocks you back a bit. This is one of those cases where even when you have a rematch clause, you should think to yourself, you know what? I just got knocked out. Right? And you should say, hey, I'm going to take time off. Isn't that what Abner Maris said in the post-fight interview? Right? And so now, you know, Maris, who just got stopped for the first time in his career, is going to hop back in a ring with the guy who stopped him. That's ridiculous. Right? This would be like Roberto Duran after getting blown out by Thomas Hearns saying, you know what, in my very next fight, I'm going to fight Thomas Hearns again. I understand there's embarrassment. I understand the people around Abner Maris want to believe in his invincibility. Right? But just to understand that Johnny Gonzalez is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Gonzalez knows him and is a better technician. I'm expecting this one to end badly. Don't believe Las Vegas odds. We're the boxing hardcore. We actually look past the odds to the styles of the fighters. This is a bad matchup for Abner Maris. He's making a mistake. Let me just say this too. I mentioned Chad Dawson. Right? Dawson, of course, got beaten by Andre Ward. Then, of course, decided to fight Adonis Stevenson and got stopped in the first round. There's an article on BoxingScene.com today 
where his trainer, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, is quoted in the piece as saying he wants to proceed slowly with Chad Dawson. Right? You have to build back up the guy's confidence. These knockouts are traumatic events. Right? You don't want to throw Dawson back in the ring with a big time puncher. It would be ridiculous to say, okay, great. Dawson just got knocked out by Adonis Stevenson. Let's throw him in the ring with Sergei Kovalov. Right? You don't want to have a guy in against heavy hitters when he's getting knocked out. But yet that's exactly the mistake that Abner Maris is making. And the worst part is the heavy hitter he's going to fight is going to be a guy who already has knocked him out. Big mistake. I understand people want to also draw analogies back to Lennox Lewis fighting Oliver McCall in the rematch. Understand, that rematch was a mental breakdown by Oliver McCall. McCall didn't show up ready to fight. I'll agree Abner Maris will do well in this rematch if suddenly Johnny Gonzalez has a nervous breakdown in the ring, doesn't want to fight, and doesn't want to defend himself. You tell me. What are the odds of that happening? Anyway, let me hear from you. Um, understand Canelo is in the process of losing 14 pounds before the biggest fight of his career, right? My point is simply this. He's fighting arguably the sport's best fighter pound for pound. In my opinion, he was already at a disadvantage. Isn't this a further disadvantage? If the roles were reversed and you heard that Floyd Mayweather had to lose 14 pounds in 30 days for a fight, wouldn't you be a little bit concerned, especially if the other guy was faster than him? Let me also say this too. A uh, YouTuber left a great comment, and I agree with it, that Floyd isn't really that fast. That there are faster guys out there than Floyd. And that you actually notice the hand speed difference when Floyd's in the ring, in the early rounds especially, against someone like Zab Judah, who actually has faster hand speed than Floyd. Right? I'll agree with that. But that just shows you, quite frankly, the genius of Floyd Mayweather. Right? It's not just above average hand speed, and let's face it, his hands are much faster than Canelo's. Right? If we're going to talk about faster hand speed than Floyd, you have to talk about Zab Judah, maybe Gary Russell. Right? You have to talk about Manny Pacquiao. You have to really talk about guys with blinding hand speed if you're going to be faster than Floyd. Let's be clear here. That's not Saul Alvarez. Right? Floyd does have faster hands than Saul Alvarez. But let me also say, too, it's Floyd's pacing and Floyd's technique. He fights faster than Saul Alvarez, doesn't he? You know, if it's not just physical, if it's actually mental, if it's actually honed and developed into a technique, doesn't that make the guy that much more dangerous? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and as I said, I don't care what Canelo said in terms of losing weight and coming in and being faster. Oh, he's going to have to lose weight all right. 14 pounds in the last 30 days. We'll see what happens. Thanks for stopping by.